All right, in our next videos, we're going to talk about using the method of cylindrical shells to calculate volumes of revolution. I think this way is honestly a little bit easier than using the washer and disc method, but I'll let you be the judge of that. So the idea again is as follows. So let me kind of set it up generically and then we'll do a specific example, a few specific examples. So in general, you're going to have a function and sometimes it'll be right up against the x-axis but hey it doesn't have to and then you've got another curve so let's suppose that the function on top is y equals f of x the one on the bottom is y equals g of x and let's suppose that the first coordinate where it starts is the x-coordinate of a and the last one is the x-coordinate of b and in this case, we're going to rotate it about the y-axis. Okay. So the basic formula in this case is as follows. Just like there was a pi in the last formula, there was a, there's going to be a pi in this one, but actually it turns out to be 2 pi. And then your limits of integration, just like before, were from a to b. You're going to multiply by x, and then you're going to take the top function, minus the bottom function, which is analogous to finding areas between curves, with the exception of the x out front, obviously. All right, so in general, the way I like to think about this is it's a 2 pi from a to b, and I think about it in terms of shell radius and shell height. So you'll see what I mean by this in the next few examples. Alright, but again, this is kind of the basic formula if you're rotating about the y-axis. Alright, so let's do a couple. Suppose I've got the following graph that I want to calculate the, well, the volume of it. Suppose it does something like this, it goes up and comes back down. And again, we're going to rotate this one about the y-axis. And suppose this is the function sine of x squared. And this x-coordinate is the square root of pi over here. Okay, so I'm going to take this region and rotate it about the x, excuse me, the y-axis. Well, just like before, you know, it's not too far removed from our other formula, the generic one we just saw. So here my limits of integration are going to be from 0 to square root of pi. Again, because square root of pi is where the region stops, the x-coordinate where it stops. I put a 2 pi out front. And the idea in general, and this is what I'm going to use, suppose we make a little shell here, just a little rectangular that goes through my region. Okay, So suppose we're over some generic distance x, because we're on the x-axis. The distance from this shell to the line we're rotating about, that is going to be the shell radius. So that is the shell radius. Again, kind of think about it in terms of being a distance. And, well, the height of the rectangle is going to be the shell height. Well, in this case, again, the shell radius, it's just going to be the distance from my shell to the y-axis, is just x. The shell height, it's basically like you're finding, you know, if you were going to find the area enclosed by this curve, you would take the top curve, which is sine of x squared, and then we would subtract away the bottom curve, which is just the line y equals 0. And again, obviously, you wouldn't have to write this minus zero when you're, you know, 
doing a problem. It's just to illustrate again this notion of your shell radius and the top function minus the bottom function, this generic formula that we were just talking about. All right, so now that is the thing that you would have to integrate, and I'm not going to go through all the gory details on the integration, but again, what you could do on this one would be to simply use a u substitution, let u equal x squared. That'll help you get rid of your x term, and you'll end up integrating basically sine of u, um, you know, tweaking your limits of integration, and you'll have to divide by, I guess, a 2 out front. But in terms of setting it up, this is the basic setup for this region. Let's talk about um, actually a problem we did in the other video using washers and disks just to show you how we can also use this method. Okay, and I'm going to do this one a couple times in a couple different cases. So in a, that problem we were looking at the function y equals square root of x and y equals x is going to be the line on the bottom so the region bounded by square root of x, y equals x and let's rotate this about the line I forget what we did in the other one um, I'm looking for it here I don't see it staring me in the face I think it was something like maybe x equals negative 4 I don't remember but same idea we're going to take this region and we're going to rotate this now whoops I put it around my y-axis that's not what I want to do at all let's rotate this region about the line x equals negative 4 alright so now I'm going to use the same idea that I did before the shell radius and shell height and remember when you use disks and washers um, there was one thing that you had to change here remember we wanted the x's isolated in that case we wanted x, we used x equals y squared and then well x equals y but there were y's in our formula in our integral when we calculated this volume of revolution so we can actually do it using shells but now we're going to use x's in our formula so a slightly different technique again suppose I draw a little shell in my region here I'm gonna suppose I'm here at a distance of x well the distance from this shell to the line I'm rotating about that's what I'm going to consider the shell radius. And a little mnemonic device, you always make your shell parallel to the line that you're rotating about. So that always kind of helped me remember. And so that's the shell radius. And again, the little height of this red shell that I've drawn, that's going to be the shell height. All right, well again, going back to our formula here, we found our limits of integration before in the other video being from zero to one. So those are still gonna be my limits of integration here. So there's gonna be a two pi out front. The integral is gonna be from zero to one. Now my shell radius is gonna change here a little bit. The distance from the shell to the y axis is simply just x but then how many more units would I have to go back to get to this line x equals negative 4 well I guess I'd have to go another 4 units so that is going to be the shell radius it's going to be x plus 4 so that's my shell radius now the shell height basically again if you think about finding areas between curves you just take the top curve minus the bottom curve which is exactly what we're going to do in this case so the shell height is simply going to be square root of x because that's the top curve minus x and this is now the thing which you would have to integrate and calculate and this integral you know it's a little tedious just multiply it all out but then you'll have x's to powers and you can use just the basic add one divide by the new number rule when you integrate but again, that's going to be the, the setup for rotating 
this region about this line x equals negative 4. Okay, so this is the line, this is the region about x equals negative 4. Let me tweak this problem just a little bit. Suppose instead of rotating about x equals negative 4, suppose we rotate over here about the line, let's make it x equals 10. Okay. So instead of rotating about this line, we're going to take the exact same region and rotate about this line x equals 10. Well, in terms of the setup, not too much is going to change. So this is going to be our second part, rotating about x equals positive 10. There's still a 2 pi in there. Our region still starts at the x-coordinate of 0 and stops at the x-coordinate of 1. So that hasn't changed at all. 0 to 1. Now, our shell radius is going to change, so we'll think about that in just a second. Let's think about the shell height. Well, it's still the top function minus the bottom function, so that hasn't changed either. So the only thing that really is different here is our new shell radius. So now, again, I just draw my typical little shell. So here will be the new shell radius. Well, let's think about it. The whole distance from this line x equals 10 to the y-axis would be 10 units. We've already gone over x units to get to our shell. So the remaining distance, which is our shell radius, would simply be, well, we would have to take the whole 10 and subtract away the x units that we've already gone. So our new shell radius is simply going to be 10 minus x. And that's now the setup for the same region, but this time being rotated about the line x equals positive 10. Okay. So as you can see here, when you're rotating, when your region doesn't change, the shell height, the shell height doesn't change at all. However, the only thing that does change is simply going to be the shell radius. Notice your limits of integration are the same. So again, the only thing that, that you have to tweak a little bit, depending on what you're rotating about, in this case, would be the, the shell radius. So maybe let's do one more. Um, this time we'll rotate about a horizontal line instead of a vertical line. And I'm going to pick again on this example my square root of x and my y equals x. I think it's a good kind of straightforward example, I hope. And I'm only going to do one of these. So here's y equals x, again on the bottom, y equals square root of x on the top. And now let's rotate about a horizontal line. Suppose this is the line y equals negative 3, and that's what we want to rotate about. Alright, well now things are going to be a little different because I'm not going about a vertical, excuse me, a vertical line, we're rotating about a horizontal line. So the same idea, I'm going to make my shell parallel to the region I'm rotating about. So now my shell is going to go left to right instead of up and down. Well, before we were over at some generic x distance, well now I'm up at some generic y height. And in our last problems, notice we wanted the y's isolated, y equals, y equals, and then there were a bunch of x's in the formulas. Now it's going to be opposite. I want the x's isolated, and there's going to be a bunch of y's in my formula. Well, the x is already isolated in the bottom part, but notice I could take the top part and rewrite that as x equals y squared. I'm just squaring both sides and writing the x part first. And these are now going to be the, the things that are going to go inside of my integral. Okay, so we found, again, that before this thing intersects at the x-coordinate of 1, well, if you plug 1 into either curve, again, they intersect, so either one's the same, we'll get the y-coordinate is also up here at a height of 1. So obviously, that's just very much a coincidence. You know, in general, the limits of integration are certainly going to change, but in this case, just the way it works out, it's going to be the same limits of integration. 
Alright, so again in my formula, there's going to be a 2 pi. The limits of integration now coming from the y-axis, so let's forget about this one. My limits of integration happen to be 0 and 1 again. Okay, and this is where you have to think about the shell radius and the shell height. Well, the distance from my shell to the line, again, that's going to be my shell radius. And if you kind of twist this thing on its side a little bit, again, this is going to be the shell height. Okay, so it looks like the shell radius, to get back to the x-axis, I would have to go y units. Well, to get all the way down to this line, negative 3, I would have to go an additional 3 units. So my shell radius in this case is simply going to be y plus 3. So that's my shell radius, y plus 3. And now to find the shell height, I do the same thing. I kind of take the top minus bottom, or in this case, right minus left. I still think of it as being top minus bottom if I just twist my page and look at it this way now. So again, notice the top curve is the line x equals y. The bottom curve is the line x equals y squared. So in this case, we're going to have top y minus bottom y squared. And that's going to give us our generic shell height. So again, the curve that was on top was y. The curve that was on bottom was y squared dy, and that is now the integral to represent this region being rotated about the line y equals negative 3. Of course, you could have definitely done this using disks and washers, and I encourage you to even try that, um, and you'll find that you get the exact same thing. So, the last point I want to touch on is Notice we could have just we could have easily done this problem using washers and disks as well. The times when you can easily switch back and forth are when it's easy to switch between having the y's isolated in your formulas to making it the x's isolated in your formulas. So you can easily solve for y or solve for x is what I'm trying to say. Notice in our the very first example we did our very first example in this video. You know, if I wanted to solve this for x, if I wanted to rotate about a vertical line using disks and washers, I would have to get the x isolated in this formula. Well, to get the x isolated, I'd have to use arc sine and take square roots, and then there would be some other kind of geometry problems. Um, and you know, do you really want to integrate arc sine, square root of arc sine of y? So that's the question. Um, if you if you if you kind of have limitations on being able to isolate one variable or the other, typically you're only going to be able to use one method or the other. As in this case, shells were definitely the pr preferable method. But again, on our last example here, you know, to me, using shells or using disks and washers would be pretty much equivalent. I don't think one would be a lot worse than the other. Um, just as a matter of taste for myself, I think that shells tend to be a little bit easier to set up. Um, shell radius isn't too bad. Shell height, again, it's just top minus bottom, or in this case, the rightmost curve minus the leftmost curve. Um, again, I think most of the difficulty is just going to be simply in coming up with a graph in the first place a lot of times. After that, hopefully it won't be too bad to, to illustrate. So. If any of this stuff was confusing to you or you're not sure what I'm talking about when I'm talking about disks and washers, feel free to visit, visit my website. I've definitely got some videos on there using disks and washers to calculate volumes. And, you know, definitely bounce these off each other. Notice again my last little pearl of wisdom here, hopefully. If you're going about vertical lines or horizontal lines, Depending on which method you're using, you're either going to have the x's isolated or the y's isolated. So things are kind of reversed depending on what method you use. So make sure that you have those two straightened out and they don't kind of run together on you, either when you're doing your problems or especially when you're doing your tests. So 
I hope this makes some sense, and good luck.